it is equally incumbent upon women to consider the experience, the unique experiences of black men. Because you know what we don't talk about when we talk about black history is the fact that black men experience damn near everything black women experience in addition to lynchings. Go, go, go look at the lynching records. They weren't lynching women. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. Sublime. But I do want flowers. You know, like I do want those compliments. I do want a little bit, not much, no, but I do want a little bit of softness from him when he's in my space, when we're in each other's space. So it's like, I mean, and that's just what it is. Like, I don't think, I think that two things can be the same thing at the same time. Like, yes, I the, the masculine characteristics is something that I love and I would say it's more important, but I also enjoy having conversations with my man. I enjoy the flowers. I enjoy the dates. I enjoy that level of vulnerability with him. Okay, let me ask you this. Yes. Based on the things most women want, mm -hmm. are men today better or worse than their fathers and grandfathers? Okay, I understand the second question. What do you mean by based on the things that women want? Based on the things that women want. So like if I ask you what are your top five things you're looking for in a man, mm -hmm. based on those types of things, are men today better than their grandfathers? Um, I, I can only answer this from... Generally, generally speaking, what would you say? I think that generally the, the traits of our grandfathers isn't something that women innately, whether it's consciously or subconsciously want out of a man. Okay. I think that that masculinity, I think that that pragmatism, that realism that sometimes can come off as coldness, all those things. Let, let, let's, let's get simple. So yeah. men today make more than their grandfathers. Okay. Men today, on average, are more educated than their grandfathers. Okay. Men today are more emotionally intelligent, emotionally authentic, whatever you want to say, than their grandfathers. Can okay. we agree on those things? You could also make the argument men today are more handsome than their grandfathers. Whatever. Yeah. Ooh. On the flip side, are women today, based on the things men value, are women today better than their grandmothers? No. And that's the problem. I don't think so. Because but is, I, don't, I think it's a scale. And I think it's I a, understand that. But generally, because the point I'm making is in as much as men today are objectively better than men of yesteryear and women today are objectively worse than women of yesteryear, only one side seems to have more demands. Let me take it back. Go ahead. Let me take it back. And when I say that it's a scale... There's characteristics, I think, in our grandmothers and great grandmothers that we might not want to, might not have wanted to in inherit. Um, and we talk about modern feminism and the downfalls of it. Um, but when it comes to like spiritual growth, when it comes to some goals and I guess objectives and just the, 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 what is the word that I'm trying to use? The, uh, the, what's the word that I'm trying to use? I can't even think about it, but just things that women have accomplished, the accomplishments. I don't know if our great grandmothers and our grandmothers would have been able to reach those. See, that's, that's why I asked the question the way that I did. I said, based on the things men value. Based on things that men value. Men value. You think Just that like, men, you think that most men in our generation would rather have the personality and the, let's not take anything away. You think they would, you think men in our generation would want to date their, our grandmothers. I say, I won't say their, I say our. 
I think they would be more enthusiastic about joining in long-term union with them than modern women, yes. Mm. Absolutely. And again, that goes back to my statement about value, mm. right? If you value men, you would consider what it is that men want. Mm -hmm. But because most women do not value men, they think that they should be evaluated based on the same curriculum that they evaluate men on. Mm -hmm. So the reality is, and I said this to me as well, you're better men than your grandmothers, but you're not better women. Mm -hmm. And we're better men and women low key than our grandfathers. Because women have demanded for us to become more in touch with our feminine side and all that shit. Women back in the day weren't saying no in touch with our feminine. I want him to be a hardworking man, great father, well thought. I did a, if you scroll down far enough on the YouTube, back when I was in college, I did a um, man on the street thing uh, at my college called What is a Man, What is a Woman? Mm -hmm. And I interviewed people who worked at the school who were students in the whole nine. I remember... There was this really old white lady that I interviewed. I think she worked in the library. She looked like uh, the lady from Tweety Bird. But she basically, the things that stood out to me, she said, I want him to be work hard. A man is hardworking and a man is well thought of in his community. Okay. She wasn't talking about why uh, he's my best friend and he's my travel buddy and we watch soap and operas that's what I'm together. To get at. And shit like so my my point is. For women to have neglected mm -hmm. the aspects of womanhood that men, men wanted to preserve from yesteryear, mm -hmm. to also simultaneously not even credit men for the improvements that they've made based on your asks from yesteryear, but simply just continue to add to a list mm -hmm. is goddamn immoral. <laughs> okay. Let me throw something in there really quickly. Question slash something for us to ponder on. Do we think that the progression, would you mention making more money, more educated, you mentioned something else. Do you think that that progression would have happened without female influence? And part B to that, the state that our black women are in now, has it been sacrificial? You said hasn't or has, has it? Because no, whether you're a man or a woman, the progress within yourself when you're in community or in a relationship, a lot of it might be fueled by your partner. So, Behind every great man is a great woman. Right. So if men are as far along as they are today, did women not have a lot to do with that? And obviously we can go into the historical context of, of what happened to the black community. But I don't know if we're getting as much credit See, that's or am I misconstruing things? Tell me, let's, let's my, talk about it. My, my, my challenge is, so when I was going off of the list, one of the questions that I would ask is, um, how did black men help white supremacy to dismantle the black community? Mm -hmm. That answer, the answers just came smoothly. It wasn't a tough question for most people to answer. And I asked men and women, and then I would ask people, how did black women help white supremacy mm -hmm. dismantle the black community? That was a bit more challenging because, and we have to be honest about this, there's an assumption of female benevolence. It, the little dove. In, in our society, there's an assumption of, and, and that's part of the reason. But that internal femininity, which is something that men say that they want. But, but sure. But what I'm saying is part of the reason why there is an equity in this conversation is because whenever a man achieves something worth a damn, we have to make space to consider whether his mom or his, the good woman behind him, his wife or beside him, influence him to achieve that. Mm -hmm. But whenever a woman achieves something worth a damn, nobody gives a shit about her dad. 
her yeah. uncles, nothing. It's, she did it by herself because she's a strong, independent black. So we're not, if, if, if we're going to make assumptions, because we don't know, right? Yeah. If we're going to make assumptions, we have to make assumptions on both sides. Because if we only make it on one side, it assumes that female superiority. Mm -hmm. It assumes that female benevolence. Mm -hmm. It assumes that black men are not shit. And, you know, people say, oh, black, uh, black women are the backbone of the, of, the, of the black community. Black men don't have a backbone. Mm. Black men don't want good things independent of women. Mm -hmm. Black men haven't achieved great things independent of women. Mm -hmm. So I'm supposed to assume that, oh, Marcus Garvey's greatness was, was really his mother or his, his, his wife. I'm supposed to achieve, uh, assume uh, Louis Farrakhan's greatness is the women who were behind him. Even if I assume that, it doesn't work the other way around. So, like, we have to tell the truth. Do we think men are valuable? Yes or no. Mm -hmm. And if we do think men are valuable, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and consider the fact that, yeah, there's a great man, I mean, a great woman behind, uh, a great man behind, a great woman, I'm sorry, behind this great man. Mm -hmm. But you must also give me that same benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't disagree with you. I think where the 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 question for me comes in is um, it takes two to tango like we sometimes speak in modern times, I think more so than maybe like the 70s and the 80s. And you even heard it in the music back then of the camaraderie and the community of we all accomplish these things together. But in um, in modern times. We speak sometimes a level of defensiveness, and I'm saying on both sides, um, and we forget that, yes, woman, you've accomplished all these things like you said, um, but there's a counterpart that was also involved in this, and yes, men, you accomplish these things, but there's also a counterpart. And I think what triggered that question is, um, you mentioned, you know, are men better, more progressed than their grandfathers? Um, and then equating that are women better, more progressed than their grandmothers. And you did say that you feel as though they are, they're worse. And I think that it's dangerous to, um, to just completely have just the individual or, or not intermix how we got there, how both parties helped each other get to that point. Cause I don't, I, I think energetically it doesn't even make sense. And there's a yin and a yang like we talk about all the time. So it's like in the sacrificial comment, I don't know why I'm harping on this. And if it's, if you're like, girl, that doesn't even make sense to be quiet let me know, but there's something in, in my brain that's like, what have women, have women sacrificed those positive traits within them? And if we're speaking on energy, did maybe men get that, those, I guess, positive traits for the, for, from the detriment of black women here's the problem here's the problem and the, the reason i brought that up are you better than your grandmas and are we better than our grandfathers is mm -hmm. because if there was a let's say this hypothetical event where every black man in the world was to walk through and be evaluated mm -hmm. whether you're a man a good man whatever the case may be mm -hmm. I believe black women will insist on being in that room. Mm -hmm. Like we need to, our voices need to be heard too, mm -hmm. right? We need to have a say in evaluating what is a man and what is a good man. However, it seems to be the case that if the opposite was true, mm -hmm. there was a room evaluating women. Stay out of black women business. So that tells me. That's not the same. Really quickly. I'm, I'm going to explain what I mean. Okay, go ahead. That tells me that black women have been socialized to trivialize black men's value. Mm -hmm. I don't think um, fatherlessness helps that. Mm -hmm. I don't think mass incarceration, the war on drugs helps that. I don't think 
black male mental health helps that. I think it just adds to it. I think it's confirmation bias. We have to be honest about the fact that most black women's operating understanding of black men is not a good one. Yeah. And you view the world and you view black men through those lenses first. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, I don't have to value what you value, black man, but you have to value what I value. Mm -hmm. So I don't give a shit if you think I'm a good woman. You should give a shit that I think I'm a good woman. Mm -hmm. So similarly, that's why there's, there's like a reflex to push back against are you better than your grandmothers from the perspective of black men? Mm -hmm. Because there wasn't any pushback when we were talking about are black men better than their grandfathers from the perspective of black men. We have to make a list. What is it that black women want? Mm -hmm. What is it that black men want? Mm -hmm. Based on the things that black women want, are men of yesteryear or men of today more closely uh, similar to that list? Mm -hmm. It's clear what the answer is. Because we have metrics like education. We have metrics like therapy and roaming. Yeah, things we are have just therapists. different. Th things are yeah. different, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And things being different from a male perspective created worse women. Mm -hmm. And nobody cares that we think that because I'm supposed to value you for the same reasons I would value my homeboy or my business partner. Mm -hmm. Now, that's cool if what I think doesn't matter. But if just like what you think matters, what I think must matter as well. Mm -hmm. And you must care that I think that women today are not as good as they were back in the day. Mm -hmm. And we need to have an honest conversation. That's why your shirt says black female delegation. The black female delegation needs to come together and say, wait, why is it that men are running overseas to find good women, mm -hmm. but men are not running into America to find good women? Mm -hmm. But let's be honest. Mm -hmm. So are we going to continue to be defensive and rattle off all the complications and, and, and list of reasons why we're not like our grandmothers? Or are we going to compete for something we see value in? Because we compete for, for jobs. Yeah. Because we see value in jobs. We compete for admission in the universities because we see value in that. But when it comes to our men, and you mentioned this during our, our first interview, there's something, how would you put it? There's something in us. It's like, fuck those guys. Okay, what did I say? I don't when it comes know. to catering to a man. Mm -hmm. Oh, I what was my, like, there's what women are like, think? women are like, yeah. Yeah. And that that's, for me, that's at the core of this conversation. Yeah. There is a value disparity. There is. I really did not want to have the white supremacy conversation. I really didn't. But I don't think that we can even, and you know this better than anybody, that we can't have this convo without shining a light on the number psychologically that white supremacy has done to us in the way that in media and music and in, in all these different avenues um, <laughs> that the, the, that structure, I'm going to veer away from saying white people, but the structure has um, painted black men, black boys, you know, and that's why going back to the last interview I had, I talked so much about like the Cardi B's and like this and that. And I know I was a little harsh in those videos, but mm, it's going to be real, real hard to get through to Gen Z women because they're the period and the eyelashes and the, all this and that, like they're those, they don't, they, you think millennials might not see the value in men. Gen Z 100% doesn't see the value in men. And that is the importance of us learning ourselves spiritually and getting back to community for real. Um, and until that happens, I don't really see this conversation changing. I don't see the manosphere or the, the black feminist sector mellowing out a bit, um, mellowing out at all. And it will just continue to spiral in my opinion. Um, and I don't want to be pessimistic, but that's kind of what it's looking like. Um, and I, I, do, I do agree with you that in, in, innately we, we have a complete disregard for masculinity. We have a complete disregard for 
black masculinity because I think that the, the role that black men play in their communities is different than the role that white men might play in theirs um, or, or other, you know, communities of people. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's a lot deeper than what a lot of us are willing to go. Um, and until we are willing to really get to the nitty gritty of what needs to be done, we're going to continue to have these combos, in my opinion. I agree and disagree. I do think, obviously, that's my whole shtick. I do think it is nuanced and complex and multi-layered. And you should, yeah. Uh, because it is. Yeah. Right. There's historical context. And um, that's part of the reason why I've taken it upon myself to learn about some of that historical context. Mm -hmm. For instance, Marcus Garvey, um, he built a toy factory, mm -hmm. um, specifically manufacturing black baby dolls mm -hmm. because he understood that women's self-image mm -hmm. dictated the generations that came after them. Right? I say all the time, a man, a bad man could ruin a family. A bad woman can ruin a generation. So with that being said, if men do their due diligence and understand the complexities that black women face, colorism, texturism, featureism, um, you know, um, even intersectionality, right? Being black and female and dealing with microaggressions and, and you know, uh, 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 assault and different things like that. Um, I think it is equally incumbent upon women to consider the experience, the unique experiences of black men because you know what we don't talk about when we talk about black history is the fact that black men experienced damn near everything black women experienced in addition to lynchings mm -hmm. go 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 look at the lynching records they weren't lynching women mm -hmm. they weren't making examples out of women they were making examples out of men and that's deliberate absolutely the tuskegee airmen were men yeah having to go risk your life and fight for a country and then come back and be hung, that's not something women experienced. And I agree. And I, this, this, this conversation is important. Um, where, I, where I would see a conversation like this going in this space is, yeah, black men went through this, but we went through this and this and this. But that's my point. My point is- And that's this. dangerous. My point is this. Women are asking men for grace. Mm -hmm. Women are asking for men for um, understanding, for consideration, while simultaneously not being willing to offer that to men. So Sorry. when it's time to critique men for all the, like I gave you the analogy, for all the reasons why we're not good enough, everybody needs to be in that room and nobody argues about that. It is okay for men to be lambasted, torn apart, picked apart, told where they need to improve. And I don't even necessarily think it's a bad thing. But when it comes to how women can improve for us, it's more complicated than that. Mm. We need to, we need to, we need to before we can. So we're saying keep that same energy. Mm. I'm supposed to put the complexities and all the shit to the side. When it's time to tell me how I need to be better. Right. But when it's time to tell you how you need to be better, nah, it's not time yet. Mm. And a lot, of, a lot of men are saying, nah, fuck that. A lot of men are saying, no, listen, if you are going to expect me to re be receptive to critique, because the world expects me to be receptive to critique, specifically black men, we've been picked apart since we got to this country. You as well should see enough value in me to be receptive to my critique, to be receptive to how all the ways you can be better for me. And that same energy is not there because the energy from our women tends to be, who are you to be able to crit critique me? And this is the first time black men are saying, I'm Marcus Garvey, I'm Martin Luther King, I'm Elijah Muhammad, I'm Frederick Douglass, I'm Booker T. Washington, that's who I am. But again, one of the clever things I think of white supremacy is 
It tends to pedestalize the Madam C.J. Walkers and the, and the Harriet Tubmans and things like that to make it seem like the people with the audacity in the black community were our women. Mm. And that's not true. That's true. Yeah. And it's, it's created this understanding within us that like our women are better women and better men. Mm. And then you combine that with single motherhood, mass incarceration. When men were being shipped off to prison at high rates, women were being shipped off to college mm. to be indoctrinated with feminism. So what do you think that creates 20, 30, 40 years in the future? Right. Women who think they're better than men. And the men are simpletons who deserve no extra consideration. But when it's time for us to uh, be critiqued, we need to think of this, 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 and that. There is nothing that women have experienced in this country that men have not also experienced from a slavery Jim Crow standpoint. Yeah. Whether we're talking about sexual assault, men experience that as well. Yeah. Whether we're talking about our, our kids and our families being ripped apart, men experience that as well. But we also need to talk about the fact that men in general are not perceived to have feelings. So the idea is, oh, it affected the women more than it affected the men. Are men not people? Mm-hmm. Are black men not people? How do you think that felt to him? Knowing that his biological job is protect and provide. And for 400 years, we weren't able to do that. Do we take any time to consider the fact that black men couldn't exist in this country at all? Mm -hmm. We couldn't even live up to our biological, spiritual tenets. Do no fault of our own. Do, do, Do women take any time to pay homage to that and understand it? God damn. Manhood, black manhood in this country could only exist starting in like the... Frederick, that, that, that's why Marcus Garvey was such an anomaly. That's why Frederick Douglass, Booker T. Washington, W.E.B. Du Bois, that's why they were su- such anomalies because they emphasized their manhood in a country that tried to castrate them. Literally. Yeah. So that's all, that is all. I think maybe sometimes it doesn't do it eloquently, but all the manosphere is trying to say is we're people too, and we suffer too. And in as much as I should consider your suffering and I should study your, do study y'all. I should study your suffering so I can know how to speak to it, speak through it, do that for me too. And maybe you'll come to realization that that means sometimes you need to shut up. Cause I'm, I'm thinking about the snipers on the proverbial snipers on the roof. Mm. But you can only really truly do that if you see value in me. Most women don't see value in men. Mm. And most women stop the conversation. And that's that's been part of the conversation I really want to push. It's like you stop the conversation of at, you know, I have daddy issues because my dad was dot, 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 dot. The reality is a lot of women and men have mommy issues because... And I think rightfully so, because doesn't she deserve a little bit of critique for even picking that shitty dude in the first place? Mm-hmm. But no, again, women are benevolent, so we must give her the benefit of the doubt. And we must list off and rattle off all the reasons why she was just a, a helpless victim. Yeah. But that, oh, no, we're not going to consider his PTSD. We're, we're, we're not going to consider his alcoholism. We're not going to consider some of the uh, domestic violence he might have even uh, uh, suffered at the hands of your mom, your benevolent mom. Oh, he just left me. Point blank. Case closed. There's no extra layers. We're not going to consider context. No, dad's just shitty. Yeah. So all I'm saying is if we're going to have this conversation, equity and fairness and value needs to enter the chat. Mm. Amen. (laughs) <laughs> Amen. I don't like preaching, man. No, you got to preach sometimes. <laughs>